Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 121. I just got off a call with a client. We were reviewing her offer letter and talking about the other things that she has in her pipeline. Now, this is someone who has gone through a bit of a career disruption. Unforeseen circumstances. And yet she overcame all of it and has one offer, has more conversations in the pipeline, and very likely is going to have additional offers. This is what I love about what I do. And we were celebrating together and laughing. And suddenly the Billy Squire song came into my head everybody wants you. My friends, what a power sentence to have for yourself. Everybody wants me. It doesn't really matter if the circumstances match up with that yet or not. As soon as you start thinking it, you're going to have so much more fun If not fun, you're going to be so much more relaxed about the career moves and pivots that you're making. So for this week's episode, I'm going to throw back to an episode from last year called Overcome Career Disruption. It's one of my favorites because I give you some great mindset tools, some awesome power sentences that you can use as you navigate all of the ups and downs, wants and not wants, all the stuff that comes along with having a career. Enjoy. One of the first things I say to every single client is that there is nothing you can say that's going to shock or surprise me about your career, about a job search because I have gone through three layoffs in my career, all further in, you know, I was in management, I was in leadership, I was an executive when those things happened to me. And they were very disruptive, as I know they are for you. But what I'm here to tell you is that there's a way to not only overcome it, but to actually learn some things about yourself and to actually make some really important decisions about your career right now in the midst of this adversity, in the midst of this disruption that will change the trajectory of your career for the better from this point forward. I know that because I experienced it. Every single time I was laid off, I made a conscious decision to leave my current industry. And of course, when you do that, what what was I doing? I was also leaving that whole network behind. There was no one that was going to help me make a move from the footwear industry into the candles and home decor industry except me. Because I didn't know anybody (laughs) in the candles and home decor industry when I decided that that was an interesting product category that I'd always wanted to explore and why not make my move now? That's exactly what you can do in this moment of career disruption, in this moment of adversity. You get to decide what happens from here. And I want to walk you through some questions to ask yourself, some mindset things that you can do that will set you up for success. And I also want to just share some super practical things you can do to put yourself on a path to landing a job as fast as possible, because it can happen rather quickly. 
one of my changes, I landed a role in about 30 days. Another time it was in 47 days after some trial and error. And after I dove into this new world of online applications and networking and reaching out to people, I tried a bunch of stuff that was supposed to be working and it wasn't. So I devised a new way of handling my job search. And when I put that strategy into play, 47 days. It can happen for you. And I'm going to teach you exactly what to do to get yourself on that road to success. So first of all, you are in adversity right now, I'm guessing, or you, you wouldn't be here. You're experiencing some kind of career disruption. And like I said, I have been there. Now, there are any way, number of ways that we can experience career disruption. It can be a story you're telling yourself about the circumstances in your job. No one recognizes me. No one understands what I can do. I'm not being given the opportunities that I want or deserve. That's one type of career disruption or adversity. The other type is what, as of this recording, is getting highly publicized and has really been going on in a roller coaster kind of a way since the beginning of the pandemic, and that is mass layoffs. So I want to kind of put your mind at ease because I, you, the first thing that you can decide when you encounter a disruption is a decision about who you want to be in this circumstance. Think about it. You can be a scared rabbit without a plan, or you can choose quite deliberately and intentionally to be the person you want to be in this situation. You can be just as strategic. You can manage this job search like you would any project or program. It is sometimes about what I would call a plug and play of what you do so well in your career, what you have done so well in your career, plug and play those habits, plug and play those behaviors into what's happening right now. What you can choose to leverage going forward out of adversity, out of disruption is your choice. So think about it like this. Who do you want to be in this moment? What kind of person do you want to be approaching a job search? What thoughts would be good to have that would be empowering, that would help you feel confident? Our brains are always looking for evidence that what we're thinking is true. Give that, give that a moment. If you are thinking that it's rough out there, that is exactly what your brain is going to feed you, okay? Because that's how we stay sane. That's the way our brains are designed to help us see outside the reality that we are experiencing inside. That's why being so intentional about your thinking is so powerful. Because if you look at this disruption as like I did, ooh, I wonder what's next. I wonder how I could leverage all of the skills and value that I've accumulated over time into something new. You can pick those exact thoughts for yourself as well. Make sure that you are planning to be and actually living in the human that you want to be in the circumstance. There are times in your life that you've been ridiculously courageous. There are times in your life that you have plowed in no matter what the risk was, right? Calculated risks. That's the kind of person that you can also be in this time of career disruption. Now, you may need to make a conscious choice moment by moment, day by day, because I totally get it. That uncertainty, where's the money gonna come from? How long is it gonna take? Those are natural thoughts that will pop into your brain 
because your brain is also wired to keep you safe, help you survive. And so, you know, when you have those thoughts that you are being normal, that your brain is operating normally, but it's one thing to have those thoughts pass through to lean back from them. And it's another thing to have those thoughts pass through to lean into them and indulge them. I want you to practice leaning back, letting those thoughts pass, getting into your prefrontal cortex, the intentional thinking instead of the default thinking and start being the person you want to be, the person who can handle anything, the person who can do hard things because you've been doing it your whole career. I know you have because I have. And if I have, I know you have too. So let's look at a few pitfalls. Some pitfalls in dealing with adversity are not making enough decisions. One of the first decisions to make when you are experiencing career disruption is what do I want to do next? And when you avoid making decisions and you stay in maybe, or you stay in what if, you're just signing up for misery, my friend. You just are. Because your brain really wants you to make a decision and it feels so powerful to make a decision. So don't fall into the trap of not making enough decisions. Decide, you can listen, you can always change your mind later. You absolutely can change your mind later. New information. You know what? When I was applying for supply chain jobs and there weren't enough out there or there weren't the kinds of companies that I wanted to work for, then I made a change. I thought, okay, what else do I have in my career tool belt that I can leverage? Because if you're like me, you've done a lot of different things. You could go to the Wayback Machine and find something that you really enjoyed and pull that forward and find the, the common threads between your success doing that and your success doing your most recent things and lay the groundwork for getting back to something you really love. But it starts with making a decision and sticking with it for a little while, stick with it for a few weeks, look for the job posts that align with that decision. If you don't see enough or they're too entry level or whatever the case may be, then you can always change your mind. I love what Gary V always says, changing your mind is a strength. It's not a weakness. You have new information, you have new ideas. When those come into play, Changing your mind is a strength and you're allowed to do it anytime you want, but make a decision. Don't live in the misery of maybe. Another thing that you can fall into is what's called action mismanagement. We hear that you need to take massive action to make something happen. Massive action to uh, making that career move. And I'm not going to say that it's not true. There's a little bit of a numbers game involved with a job search. However, if you're taking massive action without any strategy behind it, without any direction, you're just throwing your application out there, you're throwing your resume out there to anything and everything, then you're mismanaging your actions. You're mismanaging your behavior because you won't get the traction that you would get if you were more focused, if you were really following through on that decision. So don't just throw it out there. And listen, I've fallen into that trap myself. I know. I found an email a while back. I don't clean out my email box enough. Okay. <laughs> Let's just admit it. But I don't. Uh, so I found an email from long ago. And it was a rejection email the day after I had lost my job. So I don't know what I did. I think I must've gone home and started applying for jobs. I don't want that to be you, okay? I don't want you to put that kind of effort and apply for hundreds of jobs when staying very focused and very aligned 
and with a sense of ease and certainty and conviction, you can apply for two to five jobs a day in a very specific direction and get way more traction. The job search is definitely a less is more equation when you are taking action consistently and you're taking action and making decisions in looking for those roles and applying for those roles. Manage your behavior, manage your actions very, very consciously, very, very intentionally. Another thing that can happen is that you're not staying conscious about what's going on and thinking in power sentences. And this is my life coach, uh, Brooke's way of, of dealing with it is she talks about power sentences. Power sentences can be positive stories in your brain. Power sentences can be negative stories in your brain. So I want you to become a curious watcher of your brain, a compassionate witness to all of the thoughts you're having. And if they don't serve you, then you get to question them. Let me give you an example. So if you are telling yourself this job search is going to be hard, that's a power sentence, but it's not one that serves you because we also get what we focus on. So if you're thinking the job search is hard, guess what? It's going to be hard. That will be your experience. It just has to be that way. It's brain physiology. Find ways to be a conscious witness to your brain. Question every thought that doesn't make you feel good. Because our thoughts create our feelings. Our feelings motivate action. So when you are not taking the action you want to take or you're mismanaging your action, maybe you're sitting in front of Netflix all day instead of applying for jobs and reaching out to recruiters, then reverse engineer that back to the feeling that you're having and the thought that's creating that feeling. If you're thinking what's the use, then the feeling associated with that might be defeat or deflated or a feeling of undisciplined, right? Feeling like, uh, I don't want to do anything. That sort of non-committed feeling. And so then the action you take is binge watching TV all day. It's so easy to change that behavior when you go back to the thought and feeling that motivated it. So use that as a tool in your tool belt to start creating power sentences that can help you do the things that must be done in your job search, okay? It's a process. There are things you must do that are pretty much unavoidable. And I want you to be thinking in ways that help you feel great, feel a sense of possibility, feel a sense of empowerment, feel a sense of commitment to yourself so that you can take the action that you need to take. So let's talk about these power sentences, okay? I'm gonna give you a few that you can try on you can test them, see if they work for you. One of them that works really well for me is my success is inevitable. It really is inevitable that you will land a new job. It's going to happen. And one of the best ways to set yourself up for success in a job search is to find that sentence and then embody the person you were when you landed a job or your future self that lands a job and to start living that now in the moment. It's like when you plan a trip, you've got the airline tickets, you've got the hotel reservation, the dates are set and you know that you are going to be taking off and experiencing that. And there's a certain feeling of inevitability that comes with that. Find that inevitable feeling for yourself and apply it to you landing that next role. My success is inevitable. 
The next role that's perfect for me is waiting for me and I will get it. Just start thinking about that quite intentionally. Here's another one. Adversity, career disruption, if we want to call it that, helps me explore my capacity. I'm a living example of what's possible by adopting that thought. It's, it's the exact thought or something near to it that every time I was laid off, every time someone said, we're making changes and we don't need you here anymore. And someone said those exact words to me once. My predominant thought was, mm, this could help me stretch. This could be my opportunity to give myself a promotion. This could be the opportunity to take my skills, strengths, abilities into a completely new industry. What would it look like to apply all of that experience in a new company, in a new industry, or take the favorite things about what I was doing, leave the stuff I didn't like to do behind and take my favorite things and leverage that towards a new role. Adversity, disruption is like working out with weights, right? We purposefully put ourselves in a situation to grow stronger, to increase our capacity. And you could absolutely choose to look at this disruption exactly that way. It's your opportunity to explore, to stretch, to give yourself the option to do that thing that you've been thinking about, to make that pivot, make that leap. Absolutely possible. Use that as a power, power sentence. This might be the exact right time to do fill in the blank. Here's another one. I love this one. I am strong and this can make me stronger. Listen, that old saying, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And I know a job loss can feel like one of the most devastating things that's ever happened to you. Like I said, nothing you can say is going to shock or surprise me. Did I go through my mind and think, what could I have done differently? Why did they pick me? I bet you there was something I could have done that would have kept me safe and still working instead of being let go. If there was something I could have done differently, I think my brain would have showed, shown me what it was. But I choose and I want you to choose to think of this as a way to stretch, increase your capacity, make you stronger, choose to be the strong person that you are, the person that can do hard things in this moment. Make that a power sentence. I am strong and this can make me stronger. Here's another one. I love this one too. This one came from my life coach. I was built powerfully for this and I will survive. I will innovate. I will create what's next for me. I love that one. It's absolutely true too. And when you start thinking that way, you will start seeing possibilities in front of you. You can absolutely overcome career disruption through intentional thinking, through preparation, through boldness and putting yourself out there, making decisions and doing things in the ways that you've always done them. You've always been able to do hard things. So just because this feels hard doesn't mean it's going to be hard or take a long time once you decide that you are capable and you are. Listen, if you are having a hard time believing in yourself right now, I'm going to transfer my belief to you because I'm not some weird unicorn to get the results I've gotten. I just leveraged my power as a person, my capacity as a person. And if I can do it, so can you. I believe that with my whole heart. You believe it too, because I'm just an example of what's possible.
And if it was possible for me, it's possible for you. All right, listen, if we're not connected already on LinkedIn, connect with me, follow me, reach out. I am happy to answer any questions you have. I have office hours where you can schedule some time with me, 20 minutes free, nothing to sell, just only help. So schedule some time on my calendar if you want to go deeper into what this looks like for you personally, and I will be happy to help in any way I can. Listening to that fires me up once again. Everybody wants you, my friends. Believe it. Go out there like it's the truest statement ever. All right. Talk to you soon. If you like this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you'll find all the information you need to work with me one-on-one, as well as get access to my courses, Job Search Field Guide, and The Art of Stellar Interviews. I can't wait to help. I look forward to seeing you there.